G'day, Nathan from Oziaka here again, just continuing the series on the AutoCAD architecture at roof object. These tips I'm about to show you are good way back to AutoCAD architectural desktop version one. Okay, uh, what I've done is uh, going to look at some just some simple rules for using the AutoCAD architectural roof object, some simple tricks that you can use. We've got, uh, I've drawn up a simple hip roof here and Instead of a hip roof, I want to make it uh, just a, a roof with a cutout there. Um, so what do we do? Very simply, just go to these three ob uh, edges here. So these three edges here. I'm going to, the two outside ones, I'm going to change the edge to, well, actually all of them to 90 degrees, the slope. So the edge slope in that second. And I'm going to turn the two outside ones. I'm just going to take the overhang off in a normal situation. That's how you do it. And you end up with this very simple cutout roof. All right, just going to undo that. Now, on this simple roof, we can simply drag and get a, a gable each end. Now, remember, if it won't drag, you've done a couple of uh, complicated edits and it won't drag, just use your, uh, just edit the, the um, edge. Uh, you could try uh, the stretch command, but probably you might need to do the edge on those. So I'm just going to undo those two. Uh, now, coming up next, where we have this edge here, you can see that the edge doesn't influence the, the uh, ridge line. So it allows the ridge line just to continue straight through. And that's, what, of course, what we want. Looking at this next example where I have a step in, where we want the constant ridge again, I just make that roof slope 90 degrees. All right, doesn't matter about the, the edge height. All right, that could be set to zero. And in fact, when you trim, as I've shown you, when you trim an edge, it, it uh, resets back to zero. Uh, to get this constant ridge line, that will be the determining pitch, uh, the edge and this edge will have no effect on the actual uh, height. It just sort of follows from that one. Now that's good with one second edge. If you introduce in this example where I've got two separate edges, the roof no longer obeys that rule and you will have to do something else to get <coughs> a constant ridge line through. So how do we do that? Well, very simply, we can use the roof object itself to give us the calculations to work it out. Because what I want need to know is that this edge needs to be up in the air at that exact point to be able to continue and mesh in with this surface. So we want these two faces and this third face all to be the same edge to get that uh, same face to be that constant ridge line. So having a look at this distance as four meters, and I'm working in millimeters here but I can look at this edge and this edge. And that's my first edge, which is two, three, six, five. I want to adjust this one. So how do I do it? I look at B as my overhang and I enter that number. All right. Now C is set to automatically adjust. Slope is black, black. So they will hold, but I have to somehow get something to make that move. And I just click that one seems to work and it gives me a number what do i do with that number that is c that is the distance from here up to here i can add this distance to this height here and that will be perfectly in tune now i need to copy that number it's very important that your units are set to maximum to maximize your units right out to as many decimal places as you can on your uh your distance and your your uh degrees all right click that number I, I click that to make it black so then i can copy it i can then return this to the number now i, I made it gray so it adjusted okay but i've copied that figure now what do i do with that number we get our calculate out here and we put in our first number which is two three six five that's that edge there i uh oops I plus, I paste that extra number so that I paste that C that I copied and I equals, then I copy that number. 
I can now add that or create that to that edge. Remembering that I need to have my unit set to maximum and I get that. Oh, it has worked, sorry. It has worked, but it's linked in with this ridge line, which has just caught me a bit by surprise. So let's go again and do that again to this edge. And we want 2,000, so our overhang is going to be 2,000. That's great, so that's fine. We want to know what that figure is. We need to press it to make it black. We need to copy that figure. We need to make it gray again. We need to make that black so that will recalculate. Oh, sorry, we need to set that back to six. We need to get that to recalculate. We do that just by clicking on one of those. Even though we're doing probably the wrong thing, it's, it's how it works. And we've got that number. So then we go in here, edit that edge, go to our calculator. We've got our 2365 plus paste that new number equals, then copy that and copy it into this edge. All right, and we say OK. And our ridge line pops back in line. All right, so one edge, you'll get away with it. Just set it to 90, any more than one edge. To get this constant ridge line, you can use the object itself. Just work out what the uh, distance is from your standard pitching line, and you can work out what height exactly. And there is no, there's no edge because it's as accurate as Autodesk, uh, AutoCAD is working that height out. All right. Uh, just an interesting little further one from this because we've got a bit of time is my trim trick. Let's say you've got a house or garage or whatever that's along a boundary and you want all the house to look normal and you just want to make the back section look uh, to, to fit the boundary. You can see I've trimmed it here and which is great but I've lost my ridge line and this one had me puzzled for a little bit until I worked realized if I go in here and stretch you can see a little triangle appeared and what this is is the roof object failing because it can't resolve the overhang and if I just stretch it past here you'll see that the ridge line appears and you can see up here that the, the roof is healing itself as well so what I need to do is go in here and remove that overhang and then I can actually stretch that back to be a very close and if you want you can stretch that back to be as close to zero as you need it to be and it will resolve and I've, I've healed it so just a couple of little tricks about uh, some failures that you might have with the roof object and just to show you a strange one that I, I created uh, I have not examined this enough to <laughs> work out what it's doing uh, but it's a very interesting shape and uh, what I've got is I've got this edge set at 90 uh, 90 with that uh, overhang and this edge is set at 25 with not with uh, oh okay with no overhang and it's it's uh, created this amazing ridge I don't know whether you'll find that helpful but uh, I just thought I'd pass it along I've got some more examination to do on that roof so hopefully that's helpful. It's just some simple tips about how the roof object reacts. The interface is very basic. It was created in ADT1, and there's a lot of things there that are not exposed, that are not understood. So hopefully I can pass my understanding on to how it's reacting, and so you can be able to do a lot more with the AutoCAD architecture roof object. Going back to these tips, going back to AutoCAD architecture desktop version 1. Cheers.